Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another RenderMan 24 tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a model from ZBrush and importing it into Maya for rendering and we're going to be creating some vector displacement maps and normal maps in the process. And hey, make sure you're subscribed with notifications on, otherwise you may be missing out on the many tutorials that we're releasing for free each week here on YouTube. So you can see I've got our trusty hand here, by our I mean my specifically hand here, and um, I'm going to work from the very start here, so I'm going to create a new mesh for this for exporting, because at the moment you can see it's at 900,000 polygons, which is uh, not exactly renderable, um, well it is, but we don't really want to be working with topology that high. So we're going to duplicate our hand to begin with. So to begin um, with this duplicate, you can see that I've got uh, a couple of different pieces of topology here and I want it all to be as one um, manifold. So I'm going to go to geometry and I'm going to dynamesh this all together. I'm going to keep it a very high resolution, so 1024. We want to keep it around that sort of 500 to 900,000 polygon count. Um, so we'll dynamesh that and try and retain that detail which we have i've actually gone well and truly over um, so we might go back and find the resolution that will give us the same which will probably be 512 so 512 gives us uh, 1.3 million which is close enough so i don't want to go too high because i need to z remesh this now so we can turn off dynamesh and we go to z remesher and i'm going to keep the target polycon at about 5000 and adapt it that should give us probably seven to ten thousand polygons once it's adapted which should be fine we don't want to go too low um, because it will give us some inaccuracies in the displacement map um, if you have to stretch it too far so we'll zero mesh that next we want to get our high resolution topology back to this um, mesh so we are going to project it and we just need to have both subtools visible so we've got this one here i'm actually going to rename this for clarity we're going to call it hand underscore low so that's our low poly that's our high poly and we're just going to hit project all here um, we don't need the poly paint data but there is actually no poly paint data so i don't even know why it wants that and it's going to start to bring that detail back onto it so after we've done a projection we hit Control d and then project all again we'll just always yes that's fine it doesn't matter and then Control D, project all again. And basically we want to subdivide until we get up to about the same poly count as the high hand, which was about a million. So Control D, project all, and we'll do it one more time and project all. Okay, so that's got us our detail back. And we have this low poly mesh as well. And we'll drop back down to the low poly here. And we want to UV map this. So we're going to go to the Z plugin which I've got docked here, but you can find it at the top here. We can just drag it across here if you want it on the side, which is my preference. We've got a UV master, and I'm going to turn symmetry off. You can have it on if yours is a symmetrical mesh, and then we'll just unwrap. And because this is only 6,000 polys, it should be nice and easy to do now. So that's one of the reasons why we wanted to Z remesh, is because we cannot unwrap a million poly um, subtool. Uh, what well, you might be able to, but it would be unlikely to be any good or useful to work with. So now we've got this model. We've got it UV mapped and we've got the high resolution detail in it as well. So what we can do is now do the export. Before we can do the export, we do need to just double check and I will reiterate this, that our hand has got the export set to this layout. We do not want group or merge enabled. Um, we have UV'd it. We wanna to go to preferences and we wanna make sure that under import export, tangent flip and switch is set to 43, 43. Um, otherwise this will not render correctly in RenderMan. And then finally we'll go to multi-map exporter and we'll enable vector displacement map normal and we'll export the mesh at the same time. We're going to keep the map size at 2048 and we'll go to export options here. And for our mesh export we can leave the subdivision level at 1 so we wanted to export it at its lowest subdivision and as quad and we'll turn off those there and then also we'll go to the normal map and we'll make sure that all of those are active and the displacement map and all of those are active subdivision one is fine for both of those as well and then we'll go create all maps okay and i'm just going to create a new one called hand tutorial and we'll save that 
and you'll see now that it's exported it will have these options here we do not need this MTL file so I'll just delete that that's just the material file there's no materials on this so we don't need it um, you've got a normal map and a displacement map here so in Maya I've already created a scene with light and I've set my project which you always need to do I'm just going to select my model and drag it into the scene and we get the hand as you can see and um, if I render this I'll just render in the viewport here you'll see that the hand doesn't look very good we actually need to apply subdivisions to this to begin with so we'll select the model and we'll go down to uh, we'll go to the attribute editor and we'll go down to render man and subdivision surface camel clark so if we render it now just in the viewport it appears smooth this does not have the displacement maps on it yet though so we're going to select the model apply a material so we've got a new material here i'll just call this a hand tutorial mat and we'll open the hypershade editor and it's already visible there but if yours is not you can just select it and map it out like so then we need to bring in our normal map so we're going to type in pxr normal so tab and then type in pxr normal and we'll give you this node we're going to go to open and we're going to find the normal map here and it is the one that's got nm and it should look purpley like this we'll open that and we'll run the result in by clicking and dragging it into the bump normal input so that's your normal map and if you render this now it will take a second to convert and you'll see you've got your normal map there but it does look a little bit weird it's because our normals are inverted so we need to just remedy that by selecting the normal map and we'll just invert the bump and you can see that looks correct now now we need the displacement so we're going to hit tab and type in pxr displace and it will bring in a displace mode node and a new shading group which we do not need so we'll select this node hit three on it on your keyboard to expand it out and we're going to run this into the displacement shader of our hand tutorials uh, shading group then we're going to use a pxr texture and this will be our displacement texture so we're going to go open and we're going to open up our displacement we displace dis uh, export it as an exr which is what you want to do and we'll run the result rgb into displacement vector because this is a vector displacement map and to render this i'll just render it in the um, ipr uh, the it previewer and you see can see there it's rendering up fine i'll just um change the camera angle slightly so we can get a better view of the displacement map at work okay so you can see we're getting all that extra displacement detail there uh, just to give you a comparison of what the difference will be uh, if we disable the displacement map and run the IPR again you can see the difference in the detail that we're getting there so that's with the displacement that is without so you can see that just using that texture gives us a lot of extra detail and it's going to improve the render quality while saving you all of the disk space because you're not using a, a huge 1 million polygon object we're just using uh, 6300 so all that extra detail we're getting out of that map now if for any reason it is not rendering uh, your displacement map there you may also need to create a displacement transform which you can get in the hypershade by typing in disk transform and this gives you a couple more options we'll run this result rgb into the displacement vector and then the out or result xyz into displacement vector on the displace node and we can just change our displacement type to zbrush vector um, and if you need to do any remapping there you can and you can change the vector space as well we are using a tangent normal map so that is fine and we can render there and you will see that that works fine so that's that was without and that is with the displacement map um, so far as your texture size goes um, you probably are going to be safe with 10 uh, 2k 2048 by 2048 in most cases um, if you're rendering a shot that is only going to be 1080p then a 2k texture will generally be okay unless it's a very very close up uh, that you're using and you want extra detail then you might want to go up to 4k um, but this would just depend on a number of things how the model is uh, being used in the shot um, how much of the model is being seen uh, all these things are going to be specific to your shot but generally 2k is fine for 1080p as would be my rule of thumb 
So that pretty much covers everything. Uh, so now you should be able to get your models out of ZBrush into Maya and apply displacement maps to them. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.